Hey guys, what is up? So I'm going to be talking about nitrates. Yes, nitrates. I'm sure we've all been there and I'm sure we all have problems. But trust me guys, there are ways to control it. I have a discus tank and I faced loads of issues. I was able to get my nitrates from 80 to 20 ppm every week. And you know, discus are really huge fish and they produce a lot of bioload, they eat a lot. And this can be applied for shrimp tanks and water bill tanks, basically in water bill tanks or you know any other tank you want. You can apply these methods and see progress and see your nitrates coming down. Now I have tried all of these and they work. Some more obvious than others because I'm sure you guys would have read this up or tried it somewhere. But anyhow, I'm gonna mention it in the video because it still covers ways to bring down nitrates. So Let's begin. So number one, now this is going to be a little obvious, but it's one of the best and fastest ways to actually get rid of nitrates instantly. And that's obviously the trusty water change. Now it is good. It is uh, definitely a good way of instantly, you know, getting rid of nitrates in case it's too high in the water. water. And, uh, but it's a little crucial when it comes to sensitive species because large water changes can have an effect. But yes, the water changes is a huge factor. So number two. So I'm sure a lot of you guys heard that plants absorb nitrate. Well, it's true, but not all plants as effectively that is. So if you have plants like stem plants or you know uh, floating plants, can really help you out. These absorb a lot of nitrate as they grow faster. But don't rely on things like epiphytes or any other plants because generally they're slow growing and they they suck up nitrates but they also hold it in their leaves. So the moment they die, they can just release all this uh, nitrates in your water and just cause a spike. So in case they melt or anything like that it can cause a problem so just keep that in mind and if you want to really you know drop your nitrates maybe by 5 ppm or maybe 10 ppm if you have a heavily planted tank every month or so depends when you're doing your water changes you can try a heavily planted tank a lot of stem plants fast growing plants uh, some floaters would be amazing but again depends on your tank type so that is number two so number three again coming back to the plant topic now you have to realize that decaying matter in your tank causes lots of chaoticness. Now you have to realize that and look at your tank every day. Okay, and if you have plants in your tank, they're definitely gonna be dead leaves. And you're gonna to have to take it out and if you have dying leaves that are still not floating or anything that's in the tank that are dying, melting, I suggest you cut them off because all these things contribute to decaying matter and decaying matter in your tank contributes to nitrates so you have to keep this in mind make sure that you remove all types of dead matter in your tank this can even include your fish or include uh, anything decaying make sure you see that you remove it and make sure that you check your tank every day give it a maybe a one minute glance see if there's anything over there because in the long term you know, it can it, maybe in a month, it can save you up to five ppm of nitrates, which is really good for your tank. So I have I had this issue many times with melting plants and so on. And I tested with the uh, API master kit, and uh, I've seen spikes due to melting plants only because of them, and it was pretty high, up to 20 to 30 ppm strike uh, spikes. So I suggest that you maintain your tank, you look into your tank, and you take out any dying, uh, cut off any dying leaves or plant, like plants, and you just take them out and make sure you just throw them away because that's going to save you a lot of trouble. So keep that in mind. Remove decaying plants, plant material, or any dead fish. Or number four. So this fourth one is my personal opinion, it doesn't mean you have to follow it, just that what I think and if you want to like bring down your nitrates in your tank. I know many fish keepers and stuff, especially uh, invertebrates uh, and stuff, they keep snails with them and a lot of people like keeping snails with them. But personally I feel like they have a huge bio load, especially things like apple snails or any big snail like rabbit snails 
even nitrate stains in that case. They're amazing algae eaters and uh, people with your water change don't have a mind. But this video is about reducing your nitrates. And I think you don't really need them in if you have a shrimp tank or if you have uh, maybe a fish tank, like just fish in them. I don't think you need them as much unless you like them, of course, you can keep them, but they produce a lot of waste. And I suggest if you want to reduce nitrates, then I suggest you, you maybe get rid of the snails or you don't buy snails in the first place. But I like snails personally, but the reason I don't keep them is of course to defeat the nitrate issue. So yeah, that's point number four. So let's get point number five. Now again, many of you know this, many of you don't. So it's feeding. Now you have to realize that you have a tank, you have a you have a amount of fish or invertebrates or anything else in there and they only consume a certain amount of food okay now you have to make sure you don't overfeed your fish because overfeeding your fish is going to produce, make them poop a lot and in return it's going to have massive nitrate spikes so make sure you don't overfeed your fish another thing in this point is you never want to keep food more than maximum to max maybe an hour okay and that is for food that dissolves slowly in the water fast dissolving food i would not say more than 10 minutes max if it's more than that please take out the food because it's going to like contaminate your water cause nitrate spikes and that's the last thing you want i had this problem before with my shrimp tank i used to leave the food in there for more than three to four hours and and trust me, end of the month, I checked the parameters and the nitrates were off the roof. So make sure you don't overfeed. One hour max with maybe foods that dissolve, uh, you know, break apart in the water that uh, slowly. And for foods that break apart fast in the water, depending again, you notice, make sure you remove those faster. Because the last thing you want is a nitrate spike and it's gonna affect your fish or your shrimp or whatever you guys have. So make sure you keep that in mind make sure you don't overfeed them because that's going to be a big issue and I find this is the biggest issue many people make and this is why they end up losing their number six a kind of important point important uh, thing to consider is not overstocking your tank I've been a victim to it and I have my discus tank it's currently overstocked a three foot tank and I have six discuss including a lot of other fish but still my nitrates are pretty low for the week because and it's not bad and I use all these methods to control it but if you overstock your aquarium the same applies they're gonna each fish produce a certain amount of waste and more fish you have the more waste in your tank and it's gonna just build up and maybe even cause a, your tank to just crash and tanks crashing is the worst it's like instant death for your fish since your nitrifying bacteria can't keep up, there's just ammonia, nitrite, nitrate spike and it just goes haywire. So guys, remember this point. Never overstock your tank. It's always better to understock. But if you want to go a little overboard, you're going to cross your limits, taking a few of the me measures. I'm showing you guys, you shouldn't have a problem, but never overstock your tank. The moment you overstock your tank, you're definitely going to see problems. The whole biosphere is going to just go, go haywire. So remember guys, don't be tempted, don't overstock your tank. Least, last thing you want is fish dying. And uh, I'm sure you, uh, all of you guys like to see healthy fish. And so yeah, so remember that guys, do not overstock your tank. Point number seven, I can't stress enough on this point because many people take this for granted and <clears throat> just never realize why the fish or anything's dying in the tank. And I think, you guys need to really buy a master test kit and hear me out i was just like you i was like i'm not gonna buy a master test kit i can do everything myself i think that you know i just take a wing at it but i actually needed one and trust me it will help you save a lot of trouble it's a little expensive especially api but if i was you i would get it because of what investment so what happens is People normally use a lot of tap water or maybe mix the tap water, RO water, even RO water sometimes they don't have good filter membranes and the right parts. There's going to be nitrate in the water, especially ammonia too. So people put these in the tanks and you may not see 
things happening with your fish maybe not dying instantly but it's putting a lot of stress on them so what i recommend is people test their water before using it because i know many people use tap water and trust me it is not good for your fish and it's going to cause a lot of problems maybe not initially but maybe in the long run so uh, make sure you buy a test kit and test your water because so I have tested my tap water and trust me guys, even my RO water and it is a soaring 100 ppm nitrates. It is instant killer for your fish. Maybe not instant, but definitely deadly. And they, they'll be sure to die at least for maybe 10 days max at that level. So make sure you do that because that's the most important point I can give you. Point number 8. This is my favorite point of all. Because it makes your tank look good and plus it does a hell of a job. So I learned, did a lot of research about money plants or photos or they also call them devil's ivy. So these plants are amazing because they suck in nitrates like mad. And I just love this because when I started using photos, it dropped my nitrate levels at least by 15 to 20, 20 ppm, 101%. That is why it's amazing. And the thing about these is it looks good you can maybe put in a container at the side put a tank like you see here you know you can you, you can do things like this it makes your tank look good on top of that and also it just takes care of your work and you know it just sucks up all the toxins from your water and it's just beautiful like i'm sure your fish will prop and you'll be happy too so this is an amazing method you know and you can get money plants everywhere it's an amazing method to just do and and actually experiment yourself and see your nitrate level drop monthly if you're testing weekly you can try that if you're testing monthly buy yourself a api kit test it out and trust me guys photos plants are beautiful i love this my favorite tip so get them put them in your tank and see the magic happen guys so number nine the most important tip and the most effective tip that i find to reduce nitrates you won't see it out there much there's uh, there's not much info about it but if you do your own research you will find info now it's called pumice stones now this is what i use use in my discuss tank and here's the reason why it works now unlike your normal filtration okay that takes care of what uh, takes care of your ammonia okay and stuff like that okay this contains both anaerobic and aerobic bacteria. Now the thing is, anaerobic bacteria doesn't focus on nitrates, doesn't target nitrates. So you won't see a change with normal filtration. Normal filtration doesn't affect nitrates. So it's it's mainly got to do with your ammonia and other stuff, and other toxins in the tank. That's and you know just keeping the water flowing, the current going. So that's what the filter does. But if you want to be effective with the filter, add pumice stones because this has a really porous area space that helps aerobic bacteria grow and this aerobic bacteria takes care of nitrates to a huge extent it works now the same thing they use in seachem denitrite they don't tell you what they use in it for a reason obviously everyone will be using it but if you go on online you can get pumice stones for cheap but obviously if you want good quality pumice stones then CKM, CKM denitrate is an amazing option it will work some more expensive options will be like bio home and you have a lot of other things that have amazing area for aerobic bacteria so remember guys aerobic bacteria okay they are the ones you need to focus on when it comes to nitrates okay and it's only be done done in mechanical filters it can't be done in obviously a biological filter like a sponge filter so if you have a mechanical filter throw these guys in and you shall see a huge difference not only will they act as normal uh, normal biological filters filter media but also they they have added bonus of taking care of your nitrates to a certain extent which is really helpful so guys i hope this video helped these are nine freaking best ways you can actually control your nitrates it'll, it'll help you in your hobby and i really hope you guys subscribe subscribe to me and see more videos coming up i'm testing out my tanks i'm learning things every day and you know, sometimes get really sad doing it because sometimes you get deaths and things go wrong but that's how you learn you grow and it's an amazing hobby and things will go good 
So follow these steps guys and trust me you will see an amazing change in United Levels obviously by our master kit. So take care, adios and stay safe.